All right, hello everybody. So this is probably going to be the last video I'm going to get to, at least on a microscope, before the uh, new year. So I um, apologize for that, but um, you know it's kind of a mad rush for things right now. But anyways, wish you all happy holidays. Uh, Whatever uh, holidays you choose to uh, celebrate, you know, Bart Simpson once famously said that Christmas was a time when people of all religion came together to worship Jesus Christ. I always thought that was funny. Anyways, um, so I had some questions uh, asking about focusing and about focusing between TEM and STEM modes. And um, I can understand how there's some confusion with that, and uh, I wanted to you know, go over how to do this, especially with STEM, because um, it's it's a little more nuanced that way. So, um, first thing we have to do is, uh, well, what have I already done here? So, I did already apply my base alignment file. Um, I have a FEG register here, which is a gun alignment for TEM mode. We'll switch it when we do the STEM mode. I bump my spot size to four, which is what I typically use for doing uh, TEM imaging. So, what we have to do now is, find our sample. So uh, this is a Omniprobe grid and there's actually uh, four lamellas on here so I just need to find one of them and um, then we'll be good to go. Okay so we can use this guy right here. This is a cross-section of a um, solar cell device that has a lot of topography. So, definitely one of the more challenging specimens to make. Uh, of course, I think I'm, I'm on the Talos here. I'm not on the Themis. Um, you could do this on either microscope. It's a little bit easier to demonstrate on the, on the, um, on the Talos, though, in my opinion. Okay, so we're back in SA mode. So first thing you have to keep in mind with with your microscope, okay, if we're in the we're in beam settings here. Right now, of course, we're in TEM mode, but we have these two modes here: micro probe and nano probe. Okay, um, both of these modes have a different eucentric focus setting for your objective lens, okay? So let me push, see, this the focus is really high, so this is not actually the value. Let me push eucentric focus, okay? That's what it should be, okay? I don't know why that doesn't reset when I apply the file, but it doesn't, so anyways. Um, the other option, too, is, let me see if I do, if I do normalize all, so I have L1 set to normalize all. Okay, that doesn't change the defocus, so you have to just push eucentric focus to do that. Okay. So anyways, um, this is the value of your objective lens in microprobe mode for eucentric focus. In principle, or not in principle, I should say, if your alignment file is set up correctly, then when you are at mechanical eucentric, this should be the objective lens value that gives you a focused image. Okay, so mechanical eucentric again is you come to stage here, you go down to alpha wobbler, and let's do 10, and we click wobbler. Okay, so you can see I'm wobbling all over the place. Now, so why don't we do that? Before we, before we do this instead, the other option, if we're assuming that this is correct, is we just focus by adjusting Z until we get minimum contrast, okay? So I'm adjusting Z, and you can see that my image delocalization, so you can see like this is outside of the beam area, right? That's called delocalization. That is going away as I get close to, right? So right about there where I see minimum contrast, okay? That is a focused TEM image, okay? So now if we go to stage and we do wobble, Okay, so you can see I basically don't have any movement of my image as the sample is rotating back and forth plus or minus 10 degrees. Okay, I could bump this up to 15 just to you know, show this. Okay, and it's still good. So basically, 
if you're, I would consider this accurate, your centric accurate, if you're getting less than about half a micron of shift. Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of side to side shift, but it's very small. Okay, you're, you're talking about, this isn't quite accurate, the scale bar, but you're talking about less than half a micron of shift. Okay, so that's, that's really good. Okay, so that means, right, that, um, because again, what we did was we focused with Z. Okay, we focused with Z. We didn't actually set mechanical eucentric first. We focused by pushing eucentric focus and then adjusting Z. Right, so now I'm out of focus until I get minimum contrast. So right about in here, okay. And then I went back and wobbled this and showed, right, that now I could keep, now if I want to turn the wobble on here, I can adjust this until I minimize the shifting, okay? Okay, so that looks, that's just a smidge better than, yeah, and that's really good too, okay? So again, there's going to be some variation with this, right? Because obviously, you know, your eyes are going to see the image a little bit differently than mine. Um, I can show you how to fine tune this though, of course, as well, okay? Uh, let me take a look at something. Okay, so we don't have, yeah, so we should have more current here. Um, we think the gun is uh, dying on this machine because we should have in excess of uh, in excess of a nano amp right now, and we don't um, at this spot size and this condenser aperture. So um, we're thinking that that may be indicative of that. So just kind of ignore that. It's not really relevant otherwise. Just something I wanted to kind of point out. So we actually have a call open to do that. So. Okay, so now anyways, let's go ahead and mag in here a little bit. Okay, so adjusting your focus is always going to be more accurate the higher you are in mag. Okay, so let me start, of course, just quickly run through this alignment. I'm going to center my C2 aperture. Okay, that looks good. All right, so now we're gonna mag up here. This is a single crystal. I'm not gonna bother setting the zone axis though, um, just to, you know, purposes of what we need to do today. So we wanna set our mag here kind of in the range that we wanna image at. So something about like this will work, okay? And again, we're still at the default for objective. Okay, we haven't deviated. I'm gonna do pivot points, right? So there we go. Pivot point Y. Okay, and now the other thing too, if I'm at eucentric, okay, what I should see here also when I do the pivot points is I should see the image itself not move. So I can do either one of these, okay? So now you're seeing the image itself. Image itself isn't moving. So if I deviate from this, okay, so you can see right in there what's happening. Uh, let me go ahead and, yeah, so you can see, right, I'm seeing the image, not the beam, it's, I didn't adjust the pivot points, but you can see the image itself is actually shifting, okay? So I can adjust this as well to get it, see, and if I go too far, then it starts to shake again, okay? So this is another way, so now look, I'm at, I'm at a much higher mag, okay? And this is another way to dial in the focus, is by using these pivot points, okay? So first of all, you've got to, you've got to balance the pivot point, right, like that, okay? And then you can adjust Z to minimize the shifting of the image itself, okay? So this looks good. If I do the same thing with Y, it's, it's also equally valid, okay? Uh, what's going on here? Auto. Okay. Let me balance this pivot point just a little better. Somehow I didn't do that quite. Come on. 
There we go. Okay, and again, you can see the image isn't moving. If I throw it off, see now it's shifting. Okay, now it's shifting. So again, same idea. Now in this um, instrument, we don't have a piezo stage, unfortunately, so we can't, we don't have that much control, but you know, we'll make do here. Okay, next thing is the rotation center. Okay, and again, we're looking at minimizing shifting, and this looks perfect right now as the default setting, so we don't need to adjust it. Um, if this was off, okay, see the image is shifting, right? I just, now you're not looking at the beam, you're looking at the image, okay? So I just messed with the X knob, so I'm just going to turn that back until I get get it just where it was. Now I'm turning the Y knob, you can see the image is going up and down. Okay, and just like that, okay? Okay, at this point now, I can put in an objective aperture, okay? And my experience when you do this is sometimes the focal state can can get off just a little bit when you do this, okay? So that's why it's usually good to um, refocus after you put in an objective aperture. Okay, again, we want to use the 70 on the system. Okay. Okay, that looks good. So we're centering, again, we're centering the disc with respect to the blue screen because that's how I centered my direct disc with respect to the blue screen. All right, and then we will go back. Let me toggle this actually. Okay, and then we'll go back out. Switch to natural. Okay, so now notice my my I have not deviated from eucentric focus here at all. Okay, I'm still dialed in really close. Okay, um, so now if I want to if I want to fine tune the focus more here, okay, the the best way to do this with a high mag image like this is to go to Velox and actually look at the FFT, okay? So we'll go ahead and do this. Okay, so now if we look at the FFT, so now, <clears throat> reset, okay. So we can see, of course, we have some astigmatism here, okay? So let's go ahead and correct this. But you can see, right, I've got a bunch of rings here, okay? So I'm still, right, this first ring at the focal condition should be blown up, okay? And we want slight under focus. So I can tell looking at the edge here of the strip, I see a light, like if I zoom in, there's a light line there. That means I'm over foc or, sorry, under focused, okay? So what that means is I need to go up with the Z, okay? So we should see these rings if I go up with the Z, we should see the rings spread out, okay? So I'm just gonna bump this up, okay? So see what happened, right? The rings expanded, okay? So I'm gonna go a little bit more. Now see right there, this is about your optimal focus right here, okay? That first ring kind of melts away and you can't really see it. Now part of that, of course, is the is due to the view field because of the um, magnification, okay? We can't see as wide of a field of view in the FFT when the magnification is lower. But this looks pretty good right now, okay? And I didn't even mess with the focus knob, okay? I never mess with the focus knob, right? You can see this is still at here, my defocus is zero, okay? Let me see. Let me do an acquisition here. Okay, and then if we see here, yeah, so if we see here in the FFT, um, so now this is a 2K by 2K versus 1K by 1K for live, and this looks basically perfect, okay? Uh, let me go ahead, let me bump the mag up a couple clicks here. 
to 500. And let's see what we still have after doing that. Okay, so I still have a little bit of astigmatism that's always going to be more accurate, accurately corrected when your mag is higher. So therefore, right there it looks better. Okay, so now at this point, um, I'm pretty close. Like I can see, right again, you can see the light fringe at the edge here. So I, I have I have my slight under focus. So at this point, I'm going to go to my focus knob. Okay. And let's see, focus step, let me put it at three. And I'm trying to expand this first dark ring until it just starts to go away. So we can actually see, right? So right now my defocus is really small. It's only at, I guess I, I, I touched it a little, so it's 3.3 nanometers. So you can watch what happens. So right about, whoops, I went down to focus step two. So you can see right about here, this was where I was, this was where I was, right about here, okay, and right about there, that's my optimal focus. So basically, I'm only deviated 57 nanometers from eccentric focus, okay. This is my perfect optimal focus, a very slight under focus, okay. Go ahead and acquire. Okay, and there you go, okay. So you'll notice, right, kind of the moral of the story here is, is you're trying to keep this defocus small, okay? And you want to be doing most of your, your focusing as much as you can by adjusting Z, okay? And you only want to do very small tweaks to this objective lens value, right? And, and usually when you get into the high mag ranges like this, okay, to get your optimal focus, okay? All right, so let me stop this and take out this SATA camera because now what we're going to do is we are going to talk about screen is inserted beam is blanked okay beam is not blanked now we're going to talk about stem um, I was going to switch to the stem um, what's it called the stem FEG register, but I'm not going to do that now um, because we have less current than I'm expecting. So if I switch to the, to the stem FEG register, well, I can do that anyway. We'll, we'll pretend that um, that the the um, that it actually works, right? So if we go here, let me just make sure. Okay, so it's only adjusting the FEG settings. Okay, so we can click this and click set. Okay, so that's switching to Where'd my beam go? Okay, there it is. Okay. Okay, as you can see, we, we lost a bunch of current here, but that's fine. Okay. All right, so um, the next thing here is we're going to talk about focusing in STEM, okay? So uh, strictly speaking, when you're doing TEM imaging, you're probably using microprobe, okay? Although you know, technically speaking, you could do this in nanoprobe, but between microprobe and nanoprobe, let me push you centric focus here, okay? Your objective lens is going to be different, okay? Your, your default setting will be, will be different. Um, when you set up your alignment file, you are setting up both of those with respect to mechanical eucentric, at least on a Talos. Um, on, on the Themis, it's not quite that straightforward. So on the Themis, the objective lens setting for nanoprobe, because it's you know, probe corrected, that is actually done at the service level, so that's not something that, that is quite as straightforward as just a eucentric setting. But on the um, on the Talos, that is done with respect to mechanical eucentric, okay? But these are both different, okay, depending on um, whether we're in micro or nanoprobe. And the vast majority of the time, especially if you're doing high resolution imaging, we're using nanoprobe for STEM. Let me take just a snip here of objective lens so we know what that is for um, for um, microprobe, okay? So now we have established, right, that we're at me mechanical eucentric, okay? Right, our image is in focus here, so, so we're good, okay? So now, let's go ahead, 
and let's go into STEM mode. Okay, so let's find the STEM tab and let's click STEM. Okay, so we're into STEM mode now. Okay, and let's make, let's go back to FegBeam and let's drop the current, let's go to spot seven. We don't want to have that much current. Okay, 22, okay, perfect. We can, we can work with this, okay? All right, I'm going to set the mag at six. Um, uh, you can't hear this, but when I go to 630, this is like the highest mag range. Or is there actually a, no, I think there's, hold on a second. Okay, so there's one there. There's one at 6.30. Okay, and then there's one at 2.55 MX. So, oh, and then there's one there too. So, okay, so I guess it doesn't matter in particular. All right, we'll leave it at 6.30 here. That's fine. Okay, if we go back to the STEM tab and the focus tab, I'm going to set this to objective here. Okay, I know there's been some... Um, some uh, confusion about this, okay? I'm gonna leave this on objective for now and I'm gonna explain why in a minute here, okay? But now look here, okay? Let me, let me push you centric focus, okay? This is my objective lens here and now, right, I am in nanoprobe, okay? I was at this, okay? So that's a pretty substantial change, okay? So. 0.7% uh, of your objective lens, that's actually quite a bit, okay? So again, that's the discrepancy between nano and um, nanoprobe and microprobe, okay? All right, so now um, to talk about how to focus this, we need to actually look at an image of the probe, okay? So I'm going to push diffraction on my right-hand panel to turn diffraction off. So we're actually seeing an image of the probe. And we may still have the stem detector in. Is it in? Yes. So let me let me do this through here. No. Okay. Uh, it should have retracted. It says it's retracted. Okay. Let me mag out then. See if we can't see our. There we go. Okay. All right. So. <clears throat> If I come to the Tune tab and I click Intensity List Focus, what happens now is my focus knob gets, well, actually, let me let me click Done here, okay? If I don't do anything right now, my intensity knob, I'm turning it, it does nothing, okay? And the reason for that is over here, I set the focus to objective, okay? If I set it to intensity, then the intensity knob still does nothing, okay? But now the focus knob, adjusts C2, okay? You can see right there what it's doing, okay? It's adjusting C2, okay? If I <clears throat> switch it to objective, okay? Then my focus knob adjusts objective and intensity knob does nothing. And if I put it to intensity and objective, my intensity knob adjusts C2 and my focus knob adjusts objective. Okay, so I'm going to set this, I want to set this on objective for now, okay, because I want to make sure that my focus knob is only going to adjust, adjust objective. Now, if I push eucentric focus, this should go back to the initial setting that it was, and so should this, okay, so let's watch. Yes, so this goes back to where it was, and this goes back to where it was, okay. Okay, so now, what I need to do here, okay, I'm going to push intensity list focus, and now temporarily my focus knob is now coupled to C2. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. Okay, right, I'm adjusting the focus knob. You can't see that, but trust me, that's what I'm doing, right? And you can see what's happening. Okay, is I'm turning that and I'm only adjusting C2, not objective. Okay, so if I push beam shift here, then my multi functions are now activated to shift my beam around. Okay, let me mag in. 
Uh, let's do, yeah, we'll do 190 here. Now if I, okay, so yeah, so I have to turn this off and then go back to intensity or else it's gonna default to objective, okay? All right, so just like you're in, in, um, in temp mode, we have to center C2, okay? And centering's not gonna be the same on the Talos between modes like it would be on the Themis, okay? So again, I'm over-focusing, okay? And then I'm gonna go back to condenser two, and I'm going to adjust. Okay, deselect adjust, click done, go back to beam shift. Now you notice I have a little bit of astigmatism here. We'll, we'll address that in a minute. Intensity list focus. Okay, go back to adjust. Okay, that looks really good. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we're done. Okay, so now I still, let me mag up a few more clicks here. In fact, we'll go as high as we can go, which should be 630K. Okay, so now I'm gonna activate intensity list focus again. Again, I haven't touched my objective lens yet. Okay, and I wanna adjust this until I get a sharp caustic spot. Now you'll notice right here, I have some astigmatism. So now we're over vacuum right now here. Let me mag down a couple clicks and there should be, okay. So there's some of my gold particle, not gold, sorry, platinum underneath. Um, so if we turn on FFT here, we can see if the astigmatism in the probe is actually from the um, is from the condenser or the objective. Okay, so based on what we're seeing here in the FFT, it looks to me like it's actually the probe itself. So what that means is, let me turn off the screen markings really quick. Okay, what that means is that we can correct this by coming here to condenser and making that spot round. Okay, and then again, I have to go back to intensity list. Okay, so there's still a little bit there Okay, there we go. Okay. Whoops, okay, so again, let me push you centric focus here. So I put this back to where it was. Okay, all right, so I've corrected the, uh, um, corrected the astigmatism in the probe, at least coarsely, okay. Now what I need to do is I need to go back to intensity list focus and I need to focus the probe with C2 until I get a nice focused spot. So that's gonna be something about, so not this, right? You're trying to get that caustic spot as tight as you can get it. Something about like, that's a little too much. Something about like, and it, again, there's gonna be a little variation. Something about like that, okay? Okay, so that now stores this C2 value along with this objective lens value for your um, intense, your eccentric focus, okay? 
So if I push you centric focus, it's going to go back to both of these, okay? But now, since I've deactivated intensity list focus, okay, I'm, I'm only adjusting objective now, okay? You can see, right? I'm not doing anything with C2, okay? And I don't need to do anything with C2 now because I've dialed it in, okay, to what it should be, okay? Okay, let me push you centric focus here. Last thing I need to do here, I'm going to balance my pivot points. Okay, get those butterfly tips to overlap. Now on the theme is you can't do this. Um, you can't manually adjust these pivot points like this. Um, on the technize and the on the taluses you can. Okay. And now the last thing to do is the rotation center, okay? If I push this, okay, use my focus ring to turn that off, and then I can spread the beam out just temporarily here, and now use my multi-functions to center that caustic spot inside of that halo. Just like that, okay? There we go. Okay, push you centric focus. Okay, and we're good to go. Okay, so now <clears throat> what I need to do to focus is I'm going to turn diffraction back on. Okay, so I push diffraction on my right hand panel. Okay, okay I'm going to use this camera link, that's fine. Um, let's see, that's my HADF detector. Let me see here. Okay, so I'm over some stuff now. And then I'm going to go to acquisition mode. Click HADIF. And there we go. Okay, now you're, you're going to see here, right, very clearly, okay, that my image is out of focus. Okay, my image is out of focus. So what I have to do now is I have to, once again, like we did with TEM mode, I have to focus with Z, okay? So I need to adjust Z. So that's what I'm doing. I'm adjusting stage Z here until I get in the ballpark, okay? The other way to do this too, right, is you can look at the blow-up condition um, in your ronky gram, okay? So let me move this over here for a second. Let me come back to the interface. Let me bump this up several clicks. Uh, let's see here, um, natural, direct alignments, diffraction alignments, okay, let me switch to high res mode, okay, so now if I move over the platinum, okay, Okay, so you can see, I'm adjusting Z. You can see if I move Z away from being in focus, right, I can actually see an image of the grains, okay? So this is really far away now, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm adjusting Z until I get a blow-up condition. So basically, you're going to see like a flat, featureless, right? I'm getting a little closer, a little closer. Again, this is one way to do it. You can also look at the stem image, but you can also do it this way. So right about in, right about there, I have my blow-up condition, okay? And, yep, and then if I go further, then I'm out of focus, okay? And I actually moved a little bit off here, so let me go back down. A little bit more, yep, right about there. Yep, perfect. Okay, and let me go back down to 160. So it shouldn't change anything because that's a you know a mechanical height. Yep, and that's the same. Switch out of high res mode. We'll go back to yes. So you can see I'm I'm basically in focus. I can see my grains really good here. Um, and so from here we can actually see. 
Can we get any better with this? The other option, of course, you can just look at this, right? Let me boost this up here. Okay, so that's worse. Again, we don't have piezo enhancement. Yeah, that's probably about as good as we're going to get here. So, yep, and that's worse. Now your probe, if you want to use the ronky gram method, you have to be stationary, okay? You can't do this with the with the probe moving, right? So you can see here, right, if I deviate, okay, I can't see that really in the probe effectively, okay? Um, you have to have the probe stationary in order for this to, to be most effective. Okay, so you can you can still see it there. So it's right, yeah, right about there. Yep, and there we go, okay? Okay, so yeah, now if you wanted to do some additional tweaking here um, of the astigmatism, we would want to do this um, looking at the actual image, okay? So we're going to come back here, we're going to click Stigmator, we want to use um, the finest step here, okay? And now the any additional tweaks, I'm using my focus knob, okay? And I'm at step, yeah, step one. Okay, so you can see... There's my defocus right here. Again, very low values, not very far from, from zero. Okay, so. Let's see if we can get the lattice to come out of here. Yeah, we can start to see it coming through there. Actually, let me go to the edge of these. So in order to see, yeah, so this is going to be easier here. we go. Yeah, not too bad. Um, again, we don't have the, the gun's not working right on this machine at the moment, so this is really less than ideal, but yeah, that looks fine. It's about what I would expect here. So, I mean, we can see clearly the... Uh, if we wanted to really quickly, okay, but again, right, my defocus is very low here, okay, um, you want to keep this as low as you can, okay, especially in STEM, in my opinion, this is this is a little more critical, right, so you can see I'm already getting a little settling, right, so from here, I would probably want to try, and again, depending on where you are in the sample, you know, this, if your sample is not perfectly flat or whatever, um, you, you might need to, again, do a lot of focusing with the Z, right, um, let's see here. There's maybe a spot here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Well, do we want to try and get some zone axis here? Let's see here. Yeah, we've already done it. Why not? Let's try. All right. So that's a beta minus adjustment. Whoops. What's going on here? Oh, 
Okay, so yeah, right in that area. Okay, so I can see pretty clearly now See if I can just, I'm moving the stage around till I get to a spot that looks, yeah, right about there, okay? All right, so now, right, I'm gonna adjust Z to get me to, let me switch this to high res. Okay, so you can actually see the, right, the lattice fringes in there. Come on. Yep. Yeah, right about. Okay, went a little too far. Yeah, right about there. Okay, that's really pretty close. All right, let's go ahead and. Okay, so let's go ahead and mag in here. And let me minimize this. Where are we? Okay, there we go. All right, now let's see here if we can get any closer. There we go. Okay, so I can start to see the lattice coming in. Okay, I still have my stigmator on. Yeah, stigmating is way easier to do on a single crystal, in my opinion. The other thing we can do if we end up getting too lost is we can go back to, we may need to do this, we can go back to stigmating from the ronchigram because it looks like I am doing just that. All right, so what we can do then is we don't despair. All right, so let's go ahead. We have this area here. Okay, it's going to be easier to find again because it's this nice bright spot. So we're just going to move over here to this stuff. Oh, yeah, I threw that way off. Jeez. Just looking at the stem image. Wow. Okay. I mean, that looks reasonably better there. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look... Okay. That looks okay right there. Yep, I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's head back over.
Okay, it looks pretty close. Okay, I'm a little little far deviated from my okay, there we go. Oh, you know what? I didn't even think about this. Okay. What's probably going on here is I have This is a 110 zone axis, so that's why I'm a little confused here. What's going on here? Why are we not seeing this? It should be like falling off a log here. Unless there's something. Does not make any sense. I mean, unless there's a some kind of field problem here, but I mean that's difficult to see. I mean that's that's stigmated right. I mean. I mean, it looks like it is. I mean, I wonder if there's something else wrong here that I don't know about because it looks to me like there's there's no reason why that shouldn't be shouldn't be stigmating a little bit better than that. So that's why. I mean, the zone axis alignment is good. This looks pretty good here. And we can try one more time here because I'm at a loss as to why it's not. Again, unless there's some kind of some kind of field effect going on in here, or there's something wrong with the which isn't out of the well, shouldn't happen, right? I mean, room meets all the specs. Um, so that's why I'm baffled here. I can't shoot spec on this thing. Uh, Alright, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go back and take a look at the Ronky Gram again. Alright. Okay, what do we got here? So yeah, see this is off here in the image, certainly. Um, I 
mean, this looks fine right here. So that's why, you know, unless there's something else going on um, that I don't know about. I mean, all right, let's pause this here for a second. Leave that there. Okay, let me really quickly, let's put in the 150. Yeah, I know, I'm running out. Okay, it doesn't really look. Doesn't really look like it's off. I mean, it looks good. Yeah, so, I mean, I tweaked it just, I tweaked it just a smidge there. All right, so let's put this back in. Okay, that looks good. All right. All right, let's try it one more time. Um, yeah, we should be seeing the dumbbells um, going from left to right here. So that's why I'm very confused. Okay, so there we go, we're seeing that. Oops. All right, so we're off there with the zone axis a little bit. Well, I'm not sure what to make of that um, because unless there's something going on here because we should be able to split those dumbbells way better. Zone axis alignment is really good right now. Alignment's all good. Um, there could be something else going on here in terms of the, what's it called? Um, like there could be some kind of stray field that's happening here. I, I'm not. I'm not sure, but yeah. I mean, we should be able to. Let me come back here. Uh, copy two to three. Okay. All right. So if I go back here, just to mess with this, I can re retain those values here. But I can't stigmate this out. That's very, very odd. Yeah, see right about there, I mean, that gets really sharp. Right about there, that also gets really sharp. Yeah, there might be something going on here um, in terms of uh, like a field issue. I'm wondering. I mean, I wonder if we if we do a scan rotation, if that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can kind of see it. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. This should be like, 
shooting fish in a barrel here. So um, I have seen seen issues with this from time to time. So I wouldn't put it beyond possibility that that something's going on here, um, especially because I know this this tool doesn't get used for atomic res stem quite as frequently. So what I can do now, I can just come back here. And now I have my original stigmator set. Because you can see, as I'm going from over to under focus, it looks the same, right? I'm not seeing like a switching of, the, of these from left to right, which would indicate astigmatism. So that tells me there's something else going on here. So um, there could be some kind of stray field or something happening here. So because it shouldn't, shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, that should have been the dead giveaway, right? That I didn't see the... Because normally what you see with astigmatism is this: these lines will reorient by 90 degrees, and we're not seeing that. So, yeah, there's probably... There's got to be some something that's malfunctioning here. Could be a field effect or something else. So, okay. But, yeah, basic idea is the same, right? I just wanted to go over, you know, focusing with you guys and, and show you, you know, how to do that. Again, look, right? I do focus, right? It's only 54 nanometers. So now one other thing I do want to point out, okay? Um, we did deviate from the initial mechanical eccentric that we set when we were in TEM mode and we were in microprobe mode, okay? That is absolutely true. We did do that. So if we're over here, let's just, like, we can demonstrate this here, okay? So if, we, if I come back here, to stage and do wobble, okay, right? So you can see here pretty clearly, right, I am moving more than I was before, okay, than when I was at mechanical eccentric, right? So if I adjust Z till I'm at mechanical eccentric, okay, that's worse. Okay, so that's pretty close here as far as doing this in STEM mode, okay? Um, so it's not a huge difference. Now, if we actually look here, okay, so I am at 90, 96.58. So if I now, let me turn off the wobbler, okay? And let me see how much I have to adjust to get in focus. Let me push you centric focus, of course. So my do focus is zero. So we keep that consistent. Come on. Okay. Yep, and that's pretty much dialed in right there. Okay. So where did I have to go to? Okay, so not very far, right? Um, you're talking about what was that, less than a micron, I believe, right? This was um, 95.6 to 95, basically. So I only had to deviate about half of a micron, okay? Um, and that's that's not unreasonable, okay? Um, again, right, your, your uncertainty when you set mechanically eccentric can be about, um, you know, half, half of uh, a micron, uh, potentially. Um, you know, and again, when you set the eccentric focus, when you're in nanoprobe versus microprobe, um, you know, they are done both at, with respect to mechanical eccentric, but there's always a little hysteresis and whatnot, and there's always a little, you know, variation in setting eccentric. So, so yeah, so the deviation was very small here, okay? It was only, you know, less than a micron, maybe only about half a micron, okay? Let me, let me do this again, just so I can satisfy my curiosity. Okay, so I was a little bit off here. Uh, 
Okay, so it's, yeah, so a little bit, okay, so it was a little bit higher um, than I thought. It was between, let's see, around one and a half, maybe, one and a half microns, maybe a little bit less than that. Again, that's not terrible, okay? Uh, not unexpected, anyways, between, you know, mechan between nanoprobe versus um, microprobe. So, so yeah, so don't freak out. Um, and again, if it's, if it's within a few microns, I wouldn't worry about it anyway. I think on the Themis, the variation is uh, more than this. I want to say it might be like four or five microns. So again, sometimes, right, depending on your microscope, you have to set those objective lens settings, particularly with the corrected instruments, to very specific values to ensure optimal performance. So, okay, let me go ahead and turn this off. All right, so we uncovered a problem with STEM mode. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get to the bottom of that um, and figure out what's going on there. So, okay, um, but with that, that's the video on focusing in TEM versus STEM. And so I hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, if you have any other questions, um, please feel free to let me know. And um, I'm, you know, I'll try to get another one out here before, the, before we break here for the new year. But if not, I uh, hope you all have happy holidays. All right, take care, everyone.